from France. Today I'm visiting one of France's biggest tourist attractions, Carcassonne, the city. There it is. <laughs> Sick. Today I'm gonna be trying my hand at cooking a peasant's feast here in one of the greatest wonders of France. This is very well one of the most historical places that I've ever put my feet in. Um, settlement first being seen in 3500 BC, and in layman's terms, it was used as a hilltop fortress to dismantle the Roman Empire at the time. Of course, with any main tourist attraction, it's been modernized a bit and isn't quite peasant friendly anymore. It does seem, however, that people travel far and wide to come spend and see the city de Carcassonne. Kind of a funny combo, huh? Modern shops and crazy cobblestone streets. Along with modern shops comes modern food, and there are many places here you can enjoy a sandwich, ice cream, or even slushies. The walls of the city are 1.9 miles long, but within those walls, there's actually two hotels. One of them's right behind me, and there's actually 10 different houses that people can live at here and still choose to do so today. Pretty bold with the amount of tourists that are here, but I guess if you love uh, historical homes, what a better place than to be right in the heart of it. The main attraction here is the castle and the walls that enclose the entire city. Everything here is built for defense. Besides being able to walk the circumference of the city, you are also able to drop large objects and shoot arrows at the enemy. I'm sure that doesn't happen too often anymore. You know what these are? Bullets. walking and no taste of medieval food yet so we're gonna go to the grocery and I do have a car here but I don't want to lose my parking spot so we're gonna be doing some uh, we're gonna be using our feet car so we're gonna run to the grocery store and pick up some ingredients that might be found in a peasant's pantry back in the medieval times and we're gonna be trying to cook it up there not really sure it's gonna go but we're gonna uh, uh, our best try today. Okay. Uh. <laughs> 
Merci monsieur. Vous me dites s'il y a quoi que ce soit. Hein. S'il y, a... y a un problème, vous venez me voir. Hein? Do you have any more rye bread? Uh, brown bread? Uh, the bread is finished. Okay. Yeah. All right, just this is good then. Okay. Thank you. Merci. Merci. The man before me bought the last loaf of rye. You can't make this up. All right, we gotta find another grocery store. Okay, after a 15 minute walk, we're here at the bakery. Bonjour, uh, un pan complet, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so far we've only spent six euros, but I still need to get my meat. All right, well, we had to resort to a supermarket. It's a lot bigger than the last two. Fromage croix, like a fromage croix. Merci. She didn't know what I was asking. I was trying to ask for cheese croix. Merci. Got my stove, got my bag of cooking supplies. We've got our castle. All right, now to find a spot to cook at. Definitely don't think I should be by the, uh, the police station. So we're gonna do some walking. I didn't see anything earlier that really grabbed my eye, but, but there are a few community areas, so we're gonna Try to find one of those. This is a lot of gear. A full backpack full of groceries, a stove, and a dream. <laughs> this is crazy. So in total on this meal, I only spent, also I spent six euros before I went to the supermarket and then I spent 12 at the supermarket, but I bought a t-shirt and I bought um, toothpaste because the, the airport stole my toothpaste here. I don't know, less than 12 euros, but I will say that salmon is much more expensive than it probably was for these peasants back in the day. You just grab them out of the river. First things first, we're gonna throw some water in here. Just a little bit. I wanna get that boiling as soon as possible. And immediately I'm gonna add some peas. We're going to actually make this a stock, so we're gonna use a cube of bouillon. OK, 
Okay, so we have our peas in here. We have a little bit of thyme and then a bouillon cube and some water. What we're gonna be trying to make there is, well, you'll just see when it's done, how about that? Now at the store, they didn't have um, sorrel, which is like a, I think it's like a spinach, but they had a lot of basil, so we bought basil. Out of the green stuff, I'm gonna be making a sauce to go on top of our salmon, and that's why, <laughs> that's why I needed a t-shirt. My strainer. This salt is absolutely adorable. And this is gonna be a lot of work, the work in a bowl. Usually they would use like a mortar and pastel. Um, I was really hoping that there was gonna be shops here that sold old cutlery or like ceramics, if you will, because I was gonna buy something, but so we're using modern technology for this meal. This is gonna be a lot of work. All right, so today we're making a peasant's feast. This isn't what they would normally eat in like everyday life, but if they were really going all out, this is what they'd find. It might come as a surprise that I've ended up picking out salmon but salmon was actually very readily available in a lot of rivers. So it said that families in poverty had beer, bread, and bacon. For a lot of families, pigs would live behind the house and then every winter they'd be slaughtered. But obviously what I have today here isn't pig, it's salmon. And it's more representative of what you might find if there might have been a famine or something. Um, even the bread choice is very selective. I ended up going with a more brown bread. I think this is more close to a rye because it is said that the browner the bread the poorer the family, which is funny, again, because today wheat bread is so much more expensive than white bread. Although families in 400 BC didn't cook on butane stoves, they used to cook on coals, or if they were lucky enough, they had a hearth. There was such a thing as fast food restaurants actually back then, more like markets, but they were called cook shops. And lots of cook shops would sell meat pies or um, variants of like the funnel cake. Um, somebody even served soft pretzels. Ooh, that's hot. We got our basil ground up. It's making some sauce. You can see it's kind of juicy. So that should, that should strain nicely in our large t-shirt. Bonjour. Have a good night. <laughs> Beautiful place to cook. That was adorable. There's an old saying that goes, God made the food and then the devil made the cooks. And that's true for a lot of the cooks at the cook shops uh, back in the olden days. They used to serve meat pies and they would serve rancid meat pies. They'd have meat pies sitting out for like three, four days and sell them to people that are none the wiser. Still feel like there might be some of that going on in recent years. Maybe with some fast food burgers. I don't know if the last Big Mac I had was nearly the freshest, but... All right, what are the peas looking like? They're still hard. This building's... The city's very amazing, though. I mean really kind of humbles some of the history that I've seen in America. Everything here is just so much older. Definitely the coolest place I've cooked. Look at this. C'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon bon. This is not nearly done. Those need to overboil. We need them to be mushy now. All right, it's getting darker out. And the lights to the place are starting to come on. Dude, this is so sick.
Bless you. <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> Thank you. What are you cooking? Uh, making a poverty meal from medieval times. So it's just like split pea soup oh, okay. and like some. They actually used to eat salmon. If you oh, didn't know. okay. Yeah. yeah. And then like a, a wheat bread. Oh, all right. And Good. this is allowed here in the castle? <laughs> Didn't ask. <laughs> we don't tell anyone. <laughs> 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 have a good one. Have a good, yeah, have a good night. Take care. Thank you, you too. All right, that looks about done. I think. Looks good. Now for our salmon. Skin side down. All right, we're letting it buck all natural. No oil on the salmon. Hopefully that skin gets nice and crispy. Now while our salmon's cooking, gotta get our bread ready. The pinker the salmon, the better it's cooked. C'est bon. I just flipped them. They're looking extra crispy. Alright, salmon's off. Doesn't look quite all the way done on this one, but it looks delicious. Alright, now let's see if we can't sauce it up. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, whoa, perfect. All right, now we're gonna add our peas. All right, there it is. Peasant's feast inside of a medieval castle. Mm. I don't know, ma'am. This is how they always eat. As a peasant. I might have to sign up. This is delicious. It just looks like something you'd spend a bunch of money on at any modern restaurant. The peas are salty. The bread is beautiful. Salmon's pretty much cooked to perfection. Little hands of basil. Oh my gosh. It's delicious. All right, so I made all of this for around 10 euro. We also could have done without the onions because I ended up not cooking them. But honestly, it doesn't even need it. It's delicious. My stomach is happy. Ended up grabbing myself a hotel inside the city last night. Now we just gotta get back to the car. All right, here you have it. 
a night spent in a medieval village cooking up a peasant's feast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any other ideas you want to see, it could be anywhere in the world. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, until next time, you already know the drill. Just keep on trucking. <laughs>